hello and welcome back and today we want to continue looking at the Synology range of hard drives. Today we are going to be looking at comparing three different kinds of hard drive. The Synology HAT5300, the WD Red Pro 8TB and the Ultrastar series HC3300 10TB. We've looked at them before and as you can see on screen we have created three storage pools each with a RAID 5, each with their own respective drives, three drives in each. We've created three tiles targets there, the LANs there, and at the top right we're using 10GBE with the resource monitor at the top left of the screen there. Throughout this test we're going to use all the usual software, but before we go any further I thought it worth going through all of the different things in this setup throughout the course of this video, early doors from the storage values to the targets to the volumes and more. So if we move in, we can see on the storage manager that I have created three separate storage pools, each with four drives in each. We've got the 8TB drives there of the WD Red Pro series. They're already listed. Uh, and we've got the other two to follow. It's worth highlighting this system generally. You should only use Synology's own hard drives. We're using the brand new RS3621XS+. And if we carry on moving down, we can see those Ultrastar drives in storage pool 2 and those are 10 TB drives. I know there is an irregularity there between the 8 TB and the 10 TB there but unfortunately I do not have 8 TB Ultrastars to hand. Do stay tuned for the Seagate comparison later on down the line. But that's the WD Red Pro and the Ultrastar series there. And finally, we have got Synology's own hard drives, the only drives that this system is compatible with, the 8 TT 5308T. Um, hopefully on screen as well we have got the um, hardware specifications later on in the video. As you can see, all of these drives are visible. Generally you won't be able to do this normally. It's worth highlighting again that you can't use non-Synology branded drives in this system. There's a few minor exceptions. Uh, we've been able to uh, get around this by migrating these drives from an older system, something that is supported, but not really used in this fashion, so I don't recommend doing this today with your own system because you may uh, release your warranty being unsupported. At the top right of the screen, you can see all of those um, shared folders that we've created, and that's what we're going to be utilizing uh, later on in the video. But the majority of things we do today will take advantage of iSCSI targets and utilizing uh, the um, iSCSI initiator that is built into Windows. Normally, with these videos, I would be voiceovering them live, uh, but a lot of today's video that makes it very, they're very difficult because of the noise this system generates as a rack mount. Now, as you can see from the iSCSI targets we're utilizing at the top left of the screen there, we are taking advantage of 10GBE using a Thunderbolt 10G adapter, um, which hopefully four drives should be enough to saturate these largely. We're using an MTU Jumbo Frame 9000, and as you can see, the Windows machine is uh, registering that 10G connection neatly. The bottom left, once again, we've got three targets set up with a target on each of the individual drives, I think 2TB for each of them. And at the top right, you can see I've already used Storage Manager in Windows to add all three of those SCSI targets as localized uh, visible resources. And they're the ones that we're gonna be utilizing for AJA, Atto Disk Benchmark, and some Windows 50 gigabyte uh, file transmission later on. Without further ado, let's get into our first range of test. And this is gonna be our AJA performance test. <clears throat> now straight away we are running a one gigabyte test file and that's a 1080p test file as well. So one gig 1080i and we're running on the top left the Synology, the middle bottom is the WD Pro and the top right is the Ultrastar and straight away you are seeing the performance on the top right is going to be the highest. That is the largest capacity, the largest cache that's kind of the score to beat, rarely. The main ones I want you guys to look at is the top left with the Synology and the middle bottom, which is the WD Red Pros. That's the real basis of comparison here. And between the two of them, it's very level pegging at the 1GBE. 1GBE is not really enough for these systems to be playing with, generally. You'll find that, uh, you know, by the time the system has generated the one gigabyte test file, you're not, you haven't got a large enough surface area to play with. So we will be doing denser files in just a moment but at 1 GBE there's very little between these two it has to be said um, but moving back into Synology's own 
DSM, it does actually have its own inbuilt benchmark. And I just wanted to mention this. We will go back to the AJA test in just a moment. But with the benchmark tool built into the Synology, we are able to get it to analyze the drives itself. Now, as you can see at the top left, the Synology uh, technically has the lowest rated throughput of the three. But again, this is a single drive test and we didn't test every single drive for an average. The reason I'm showing you this is just to let you know, one, that there are um, benchmark tools built into the Synology, but also to give you an idea of how the Synology rated them on a one-off test of all three drives, with the latency being notably higher um, on the Synology. I say notably, it's very, very small in the grand scheme of things, you know, barely a millisecond. Um, but uh, with regards to throughput and I.O. and I.O.P.T., I should say, uh, it did seem between the three drives that it was the lower of the three. Now, moving back into AJA, we can move on to a four gigabyte test file, and this is a 4K Red 8D file. So this is much more dense files to be playing with. And this is kind of where that higher durability factor and that higher terabytes written handling on the Synology drive should really start to show itself that consistency of performance long term. Now, obviously, we are dealing with still a relatively small file in the grand scheme of things, but a lot of that high end durability and the ability to handle that flushing of data consistently is where a lot of that firmware improvement is going to be. And that's where we're already seeing that Synology drive take a notable lead over that of the WD Red Pro, Pro below it. Now, it is, of course, worth noting, one, that these three tests are not being filmed uh, at the same time. They're all conducted one after the other, so no simultaneous access. But the read limitation there, a lot of that has to do with my own internal system. An i7, 7th uh, generation 6 core, or 8th generation 6 core, sorry, um, PC with 32 gig of memory. But still, nevertheless, at this kind of density and speed via that Thunderbolt adapter, uh, read did suffer, particularly during the screen recording. But nevertheless, focus on the right for now. And you'll see that although there's similarities, obviously the top right drive, the Ultrastar, is winning, of course. But once we look at the comparative numbers between the Synology and the Red Pro, we saw similar numbers. Now, if we move into the 5K 16 gig file, our final AJA test, this is the densest file of the three. And the Synology did take a lead over that of the WD Red Pro, something we expected, and it'll be interesting to see if this plays out throughout the whole test. We're only going to run uh, one or two rotations on this because it's a much larger, slower file. But as you can see, the Synology completed the first write first, and it maintained the highest speed of the three in terms of write. Um, exactly the same test, exactly the same test file, but the Synology there took uh, a notable increase. They're not a huge one in the capacity of Array 5 4-disc array, but still took the lead. But in terms of read, the Ultrastar is where it's taken a tiniest bit of a lead. The Pro is starting to lag behind a tiny bit in this test, but we're two-thirds of the way through this rotation. And as we move back into the right performance there, the Synology drive has just started to lag the tiniest bit behind the Ultrastar, with the WD Red Pro now falling behind. And again, that um, TBW and the handling of an enterprise drive via a Pro, as we start to see the longevity improvements over the two of them. But still, nevertheless, as we reach the end, the difference between them is still quite marginal um, at the end of the rotation. Now, if we move on to AJA, we can look at two things. Uh, read and write performance generally noted, which is a great deal more analytical than that found in AJA. And later on, we'll look at the IO, IOPS even. Um, but as we look at the overall uh, consistent performance between the two of them, overall, over 10 GBE, um, obviously the Ultrastar has taken the notable lead between the three of them, but not consistently. And there's been a number of times in that testing, if you look towards the later end of the spectrum, where the Synology hard drive has taken a, a notable lead there. Remember, today's video isn't just about individual drive performance, but it's how well the Synology drive works in its own system, where they claim its inherent performance benefits are the most visible. And there's lots of notable kind of things we can take from the comparison today that prove both sides, unfortunately. But I would say it certainly beat the Red Pro there, but not the Ultrastar in Atto read-write. Now, in IOPS, 
something you generally don't think about when it comes to hard drives, once again, because of the spin-up and the RAID creation factor, results did fluctuate all over the place, but the Synology drive in the Synology system outperformed the WD Red Pro in most regards as we scroll down through the recorded IOs, particularly in write, of course, because we said we'd focus on that. And if we make our way into that 50 gig test file transfer, and again, this has all been squeezed into screen a little bit, I appreciate, but this is 50 gig of data being transferred over 10 GBE onto these respective RAID 5s. And again, the two things to look at here is one, the average time that this takes. And of course, you can see which one's going to finish because they've all started at exactly the same time here. And it's the same amount of data across all three of them. But nevertheless, as this transfers through all of these, it's those spikes all the way through. What we're looking for is the most consistent line because this is a huge arrangement of data here from small to large files. There's photos, there's video, there's docs. There's some intense 4K, MKV type stuff in there, but there's also um, uh, vid uh, small video files, index files, uh, some general NFO files. And as we go through it, the WD Red Pro took quite an early lead, but now it's kind of started to fall back because it's dealt with all of those larger files and it was able to do those quicker, hence those spikes. Whereas the Ultra Star um, enterprise grade hard drive and the Synology uh, enterprise grade hard drive, the pair of them have got a far more consistent run. And we're seeing a little bit there of the tortoise and the hare going on. I do think the Pro is going to win this, which again, I would not have seen coming for this file type. But nevertheless, it did complete the task first. And I do think that's worthy of note. The Synology drive there seems to be coming in second by around about 15 seconds at the 50 gig limit, with the Ultrastar surprisingly coming in last there between the three of them. And I do think that's an important takeaway here, because again, Ultrastars, whenever we've used them in 10G in those big RAID access uh, formats previously, seemed weirdly to kind of lose something um, over 10 GBE with the system handling. Nothing really, really bad, but we have seen this sort of thing before. Now, we're going to end this video um, with regards to RAID comparative testing, because again, this isn't the only RAID comparison we're doing between these file types, and we're getting ready for our virtual machine comparison. We're going to run uh, a virtual machine on each of these three RAID uh, RAID 5 volumes that we've created, and from there, we're going to bench test these uh, VMs running within Synology Virtual Machine Manager to see how each one performs. And we're, of course, going to be utilizing um, Atto, this benchmark, and maybe introducing some pass marks as well to see how each VM runs. And there's in the background, of course, when we started running those benchmarks earlier. So for now, we're going to withhold judgment until we go to the next part in this series. But I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I do think there's some bits and bobs to take from this, but this is by no means the last part. So it would be remiss to make any kind of verdict at this stage. But it's been a nice, brief, quick RAID 5 overview on this system comparing the Synology hard drive HAT5300 versus the WD Red Pro and Ultra Star series. Stay tuned for the next part. If you've got any requests that you want to see, well, I've got these up and running, do let me know. And of course, if you are going to go for Synology hard drives or the Synology R6, uh, RS3621XS Plus, do remember that Synology hard drives can only be used in Synology's own system, and this now should only be really used with their own range of hard drives. Otherwise, you may be t uh, delicately tiptoeing around uh, your supported warranty moving forward. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.